Hi everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Welcome to video number 38 in our IC7300 from A to Z series. Tonight we're going to take a look at the RIDI transmit memories. You may notice that my video setup looks a little unusual. I'm in an even more temporary location than normal tonight. We're visiting at my father-in-law's house and we're doing a little remodeling, so... I've had to uh, move my temporary location to an even more temporary location. So I'll apologize for the lighting in the video, but hopefully we'll get the point across. Let's take a look. Okay, let's take a look at the RIDI memory functions. You might notice that 40 meters looks unusually dead right now. And the reason for that is that the rig is connected to a dummy load, so we're not going to be hearing anything coming in. And let's uh, turn up the squelch here so that we uh, don't have to listen to the background noise. So we're going to look at the memories. First, let's get into the RIDI decode mode where we can see the memories. The rig is already in RIDI. So we're going to press menu. We're going to hit decode. And of course, there won't be anything to decode here, but we've got the decode screen on. And then the transmit memories are accessed by pressing the TX mem button here. And you can edit the memories just the same way or very similar to how you would edit the voice memories or the CW keyer memories. And for a refresher on that, uh, video 21 has uh, information on how to program the voice memories and video number 35 tells you how to program the CW keyer memories. So let's just take a look here at what's in them and if we press the edit button you'll see the memories and this is RIDI transmit 1 through RIDI transmit 8 and what I have in here is the defaults that just come pre-programmed when you get the rig. So I haven't edited any of these at all. As you can see, it says, you know, DE, ICOM, ICOM, and K for go ahead. And some other sort of standard looking messages that you might use in a Q-cell. So let's edit one of these. If I touch it, you'll see what's in the memory and I can press the edit key and we can go to the end of the memory here and I can uh, start clearing things out and you have a regular typewriter keyboard here so I could for example put in CQ CQ uh, D E W A and we need to hit numbers 2 I V D uh, space K and we will put a whoops I edited it I wanted to put a carriage return in there let me go back to the end here and the uh, carriage return was in the symbols table so here you see carriage return the little down arrow to the left will put a carriage return in so that would go to the next line on the receiving person's ready decoder all right, so now we'll press enter. So I've got just my CQ in here, and we'll go back. And I'm not really going to spend any time going through editing the other ones or showing you how to put in different things for a QSO because I really believe you're probably not going to use these memories, and I'm going to explain why in a moment. Uh, but... Let's at least show you how to transmit with them. So to transmit, you just actually touch the memory, but let's make sure we can hear it. So I've got my RF power set down to 2%. Monitor, I want to turn the monitor on. So now our monitor is on. And to transmit the RIDI memory, it's exactly the same as the voice or the CW memory. You just touch the memory. And it keys the rig and sends whatever's in that memory and then unkeys it when it's done. So simple as that. There's really not too much to it. Now let's quickly talk about why you're probably never going to use these. 
The key difference with the RIDI memories from the other memories is that, for example, uh, with the voice memories, and let's actually just go back and take a look at them here, and we'll look in here. So I have, um, you know, the CQ, and then the memory 3 here has QSL UR599599 break. So that might be something that I would send something, send back to somebody trying to have a QSO. And I might put the same thing in my voice in a voice memory or in CW in the CW memory. The difference with those memories is if I'm contacting somebody with the voice memory, I could take my microphone and then when somebody comes back to me, I could key the mic and then say K0XYZ and then press the memory button and then it would finish out with QSL, UR, whatever. Um, and the same with CW, I could use the CW key and then I could send the other person's call or maybe any other information I want and then hit one of the memories to transmit the pre-recorded part of the conversation. With the RIDI memories, the only way that I can put another station's call sign in here or any other specific information that might change on every QSO is to go into this menu, edit the memory, and then get back out and then send it. And as you saw from the touchscreen keyboard, you know, there's a bunch of steps, it's a little bit tedious, and you're not going to be doing that during a QSO. There is no way that I know of to connect a keyboard to the 7300, for example, via the USB port. At least there's nothing in the manual that talks about any support for that. Uh, if I ever discover that there's some sort of uh, undocumented feature that allows you to do that, I'll be sure and put together a video for it. But the bottom line is to do anything with RIDI, if you're going to actually communicate with other stations, which is generally the idea, you're going to need to have a computer connected to the rig through USB with a RIDI program and a keyboard uh, or, you know, a multifunction program like FL Digi or Ham Radio Deluxe or whatever you might want to use. And you're going to need to do that to inject calls. And if you're going to do that, all of those programs have memory functions that you can program into them to send this. So it's kind of nice that ICOM put these memory functions in here, but I just don't see how you're ever going to use them to actually make RIDI contacts on a general, uh, on a regular basis. So that's really all I'm going to cover for the memories. They're uh, pretty quick and uh, unfortunately, I think pretty useless. So if anybody has any other suggestions on how you might use them, or maybe you disagree and you think these things might be useful in some manner without having a computer keyboard, and if you have a computer, like I said, I don't see how they're going to be useful. If I'm using the program, I'm going to use it to do everything. So if you've got a suggestion on that or you differ in your opinion on that, I'd be glad to hear from you. And if anybody's got any great ideas on how to use these better, please uh, provide some comments. So that's it for the Ritty Memories. Thanks. Well, that covers it for this time. As I said in the segment, if you've got suggestions or corrections or other ideas, I'd be happy to hear from you. Please leave a comment in the comment section. If you're enjoying these videos, please click the like button. That always helps out. And if you're enjoying the entire series, please consider subscribing. You can either click on the little icon that will pop up at the bottom right of your screen or click on the subscribe button on the channel page. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.